All right, now we're going to do adding and subtracting with radicals. And this works basically the exact same way that um, it does with um, adding and subtracting polynomials. We're going to combine similar terms, okay? So I'm going to do this problem the absolute longest way possible. I look at this and I'm like, okay, I can factor out an x squared. If I factor out an x squared of a 3 plus 5, and then um, order of operation says I can add together what is inside those parentheses. So I have x squared times 8. Standard form says put the coefficient up front and the variable behind it like that. Okay, so 8x squared. So notice, I could have just added together the coefficients, 3 plus 5 gives me 8, and use my um, like term, my x squared, okay? So this exact same process works with radicals, and we can add and subtract similar radicals. Similar radicals have the same index and the same radicand. Okay, so let's go through here and see if we can pick out um, similar radicals. So if I have 5 cube root of 7 minus 8 cube root of 7, these guys are similar radicals. They have the same index and they have the same radicand. So all that I have to do in this case, I'm going to do this one the long way as well, is I am going to factor out the cube root of 7, I'll be left with the 5 minus 8. Do that there, that'll give me what, a negative 3. Then I have the cube root of 7 back here. Standard form says put that one up front. So a negative 3 cube root of 7. Okay? Let's take a look at this next one here. I have 3 fourth root of 5 plus 7 cube root of 5. Well, this one doesn't qualify because I do not have the same index. I have a 4 and a 3. And if that happens, you're done. Walk away. Okay? Then I have 2, um, fifth root of 8, plus 3, fifth root of 9. We can't put this one together either because um, we have different radicands. So we have to walk away. We're done with that one. Take a look at this next one. I have square root of 3, square root of 3, square root of 3. Oh, I can actually do those because those are all like terms. So let's take a look at our coefficients there and put that together. So I have 5 minus 4, that gives me a 1, plus the 6 gives me a 7, and my like radical is square root of 3. And there you go. Okay, next one here. I have 3 square root of 8 plus 5 square root of 18. Well, you guys are probably saying, well, those aren't similar radicals. But remember, we have to simplify those first to see if um, they are similar radicals or not. So, simplify square root of 8. I want to see if I can rewrite 8 using a perfect square. Well, I got a 4. So, 8 really is 4 times 2. All right, so what I usually do is when I look at these and I'm going, okay, I got that 2. If I divide the 18 by 2, that's going to give me a 9, and 9 is on my perfect square list. Okay, so 18 is 9 times 2. Square root of 4 is a 2. Now, here's where most people mess this type of problem up, is they forget to multiply that 2 by that 3 out there. So... Square root of 4 is 2, so I'm going to multiply that 3 times 2 together. Square root of 2, I can't do a thing with it. So this is going to give me 6 square root of 2. Here's my plus sign. Okay, square root of 9, that's a 3. So 5 times 3, then I have that square root of 2. Okay, so this is going to give me 15 square root of 2. Oh, look at they are like terms. So we can combine these guys. So I can go 6 plus 15. That gives me a 21 square root of 2. And there we go. 
Let's practice this a few more times. Okay. So 6 square root of 3 minus 5 square root of 3. All right. They're like terms. So I can put together the um, coefficients here. 6 minus 5 gives me a 1 square root of 3. You can write it like that, or you can just say square root of 3, because we have an implied 1 in front there. Okay, 3x square root of 7 minus 4x square root of 7. Now, in this case, our like term is actually the x square root of 7. If I was missing the x over here, I would not be able to put those guys together. So, um, I have the same like term here. I can go 3 minus 4. That gives me a negative 1. And then write your like term behind it. And there you go. That's it. And you don't have to have that one there. You could have um, negative x square root of 7 if you wanted to. Okay, 4 square root of 2 minus square root of 2. Do not forget that there is an implied 1 here. I have the similar terms. So now I can go 4 minus 1 gives me a 3. Then use your similar term behind it, square root of 2. Okay, let's take a look at this one. Square root of 2, square root of 2, square root of 5. Well, these guys over here are like terms, so I can combine those guys and then just tag this one on the back. So 5 plus 3 gives me an 8 square root of 2, and this one's not a like term, so we're just going to put it on the back right there. And that's as far as we can go. All right, this one, I'm not so sure. We're going to have to break this apart and rewrite all of those. Okay, so square root of 20. Let's rewrite 20 with a perfect square. That would be a 4. Okay. So 4 times 5. Since I got this 5, I'm going to check out that 80 with a 5. Wouldn't that be, what, 16 times 5? I believe it is. Okay. Yep, 16 times 5. And another 5 back here, that would be 9 times 5. Yeah, usually I tackle the smallest one first and then, you know, pick out the number that's not the perfect square, then divide those by it and see what I get. Okay, so this is going to give me 2 square root of 5 minus, this is going to give me a 4 square root of 5 plus, this one will give me a 3 square root of 5. All right, look at that, all like terms there. So I can take care of the coefficients here. 2 minus 4 gives me a negative 2, plus the 3, which will give me a positive 1. So this is going to be a square root of 5. You could um, put the 1 there in front if you wanted to, but this is good. Okay, again, we're going to need to figure out what we got going on here. Rewrite this, that would be a 4 times 2. Okay, since the 4 is a perfect square and that 2 is not, I'm going to check these guys with the 2. So 50 divided by 2 gives me a 25. Oh, look at that, and that's a perfect square. 72 divided by 2 gives me a 36. Oh, and that's a perfect square. Look how that worked out. Okay, do not forget these guys up here. Okay, that's where most people mess this up. So square root of 4 gives me a 2. So now I have an 8 square root of 2 minus 20 square root of 25 gives me a 5. So that's going to give me a 10 square root of 2. Square root of 36 is going to give me a 6. So that's going to give me a negative 30 square root of 2. Oh, look at that. I got similar terms here. So I can just um, do the coefficients up front. So 8 minus 10 gives me a negative 2 minus the 30 is going to give me a negative 32 and then my like term square root of 2. All right. Okay. Let's do this last one. It's got a lot of stuff, a lot of variables going on here. 
Let's take a look at 75. Can I rewrite that as a perfect square, like 25 times 3? Okay, and back here a 12, that's a 4 times 3. All right, let's clean this up. Square root of 25 is 5. So that's going to give me a 35. X, it's staying underneath because I only have one of them. The Y part here, Y cubed. So 2 goes into that 3 one time with 1 left over. So that's what that one looks like. Let's come back here and see if we can get the same thing going on. Okay, square root of 4 is a 2. So I get a negative 8 there. X, it's not going anywhere. There's only one of them. And we've got a Y, and then we have that Y. All right, Y squared of XY, Y squared of XY. Okay, we're good. So now I got the 35 minus 8, which is going to give me a 27. Right? Let me see. Is that what that is? 35. Yep, that is a 27. And this is going to be, oh, I forgot this guy here. I did it in both places. That's a little strange. Let me do this here. I got the, the three here and the three over there that I need to get right in here and right in here. They're still the same, okay? So that is gonna be 27. Then my like term is gonna be y, square root of three x y. And there you go. All right, last two here. We need to clean this up. All right, this one here is not breaking in our rules. So we're gonna let that be for right now. This one here is breaking a rule. I have a radical in the denominator, so I need to clean that up. And I'm gonna do that by multiplying it by square root of three over square root of three. Okay, so that will give me a square root of three, and a square root of three times square root of three gives me a square root of nine, and square root of nine is three. Okay, so this part right here became that. I'm gonna rewrite this up here. Okay, now I can combine these guys. I have like terms um, in the denominator, so I can do that. Up here, do not forget that there is a one in front of those guys. So one square root of three plus one square root of three would give me a two square root of three and put it over my common denominator of three. And there you go. And you cannot cancel those guys out. They have different um, indexes, so don't even think about that. Okay, the next one here. Not breaking any rules, so we're gonna leave that alone. This one here, it is breaking a rule. So I have one five. Let me see here, we've got a cubes and we need fives. Oh, if I can get that up to 125, I'd have a perfect cube that involves a five. So I need to multiply both top and bottom by the cube root of 25. Cube root of 25, okay. That would, um, multiplying by one's not gonna change the value. So now that's gonna be a cube root, I mean three, cube root of 25 over the cube root of 125, which will give me three, cube root of 25 over five. Okay, let's bring this one down now. So I have cube root of 25 plus. That's over a one. I need a common denominator to be able to combine those guys. So I'm gonna multiply this by five over five. So that would give me a five here and a five there. Now I can, oh, I forgot the little cube right there. Now I can put these guys together. Okay, when I add those guys up right there, that will give me an eight cube root of 25 
over my common denominator of five. Okay, let me see if I got that right there. Yep, and that's it. All right, no more. Okay, you guys have a great day. Good luck with the homework. Bye.